Hey everybody, welcome back to another land. Place of Binding of Isaac after birth plus a couple of very, very easy runs in a row. Uh, little to complain about except this haircut. P71KRR2Y. Although, <laughs> who am I to disagree? I was, I was trying to think of where to make the joke work. You know, who am I to diss a haircut because I'm a bald man, but then their sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? Uh, like, who am I to diss a... And then a hairstyle that rhymes with E, but all I can get is Jerry Curl with a Curl Jerry. Yo, so we have the weirdest, mildest synergy. Please, God, range and damage up. We lost almost all of our damage. But at least we can continue to hold on to this. Our rate of fire got way higher. Okay, freeze. You got it. Range is horrible. But I think this is where you want to stay. Your damage kind of came back, and your rate of fire is way better than it usually would ever be at this point. So, like... Okay, it's not a dream come true necessarily because we're in a convoluted space from an HP standpoint. But this is where you stop drill and you hit oil. We're in a very, very nice spot, to be honest. And I just realized, always should look, but there's a lot of setup stuff to do at the start of a run, you know? Um, but it, it is an XL floor, and an XL floor is very relevant. We certainly don't want to screw up our deal with the devil chance because real talk could basically set us up for... Guaranteed victory is a little bit of a stretch, but, you know, in all likelihood, a great chance for victory one way or the other. So far, so good. Except, I mean, damage and uh, range, bad. But apart from those, so good. And our damage stat, can't even really call it bad. Because our, our DPS is uh, is out of this world. Michael Jackson's off the wall. Yeah, he's off the planet. Isn't he gonna freeze himself? It's a 10 year old joke before Michael Jackson had passed away. From uh, Flight of the Concord's original series run on HBO. Still very strange to me that, you know, that show is like 11 years old now. I've told this before, but like when I was a teenager, um, the, the movie Reality Bites had a 10 year uh, remaster and uh, I was like oh my god 10 years it's crazy 1994 was 10 years ago <laughs> I was only 16 or probably 15 to be honest at the time but I was like wow for something to be remastered 10 years after its release that's like a long time now I'm like it's been 10 years since Flight of the Concords was on the air I mean it makes sense not even, it doesn't feel like it was yesterday, but you just kind of, it's like when you lose track of time and you're like, oh my god, it's 8 p.m. already? I didn't realize, except instead of it being 8 p.m., it's like several years later. I don't mean that to sound negative. Anytime that comes up, people, uh, you know, when it comes up in other media, oh, this is interesting. I feel like, uh... People always take the position, you know, that song. Months I was seven years old. Now I'm 90 years old. And my joints are not bones. And, you know, it's always like, man, oh, time flies. But I'm like, dude, it's been a good decade. I mean, for planet Earth, maybe not necessarily, you know. I'm not even getting into political stuff. It's more like a climate thing. But anyway, like, apart from that... On a, on a personal level, it's been a pretty pretty good decade. I'm not saying, like, where does the time go? I'm not melancholy about the time spent, you know? As far as I'm concerned, there's time enjoyed, Adrian. That's not a quote from Rocky. I just thought I had to, I had to punch it up a little bit. <laughs> anyway, this run is, is wild. Three rate of fire is, uh, I mean, it's spectacular. Nothing else is really uh, happening. It's mostly just really, really fast shooting. And then, dude, Booger Tears, totally cool as well. Although I don't like getting close enough to an enemy to make it tick. We'll head downwards here. I'm excited. Um, I'm not excited that E3 is over, but E3 is over. I'm excited to get back to... Honestly, it's uh, <laughs> makes me sound needlessly contrarian. 
But the most annoying thing about E3 is not really that annoying. The most annoying thing for me is that very few uh, games come out. As a result of that, on my Tuesday stream, when I look for new stuff to play, it's like a wasteland on Steam. Um, that's a really, really minor thing for like a once a year sort of situation. And you, it, it actually is almost hypocritical as well, because like the number one thing I complain about um, on Steam is like there's so many games that come out that to sift through them to find the gold is sometimes, uh, well, it's basically impossible unless it comes to, you know, trending new releases. But the thing is, mo it, it's not actually hypocritical. You gotta look at the nuance because most of the stuff that comes out on Steam that is bloat, in my opinion, is not stuff that is like undiscovered indie gems that get swept away. Those do occur. I, I, I do believe it. I'm not disputing the notion of their existence. However, most of it, and you can check Steam's... Don't check popular new releases. You're gonna think I'm a, a jerk. Go check full new releases, and you will realize that most of what comes out on Steam, obscuring your vision of like what I would call more legitimate new releases, are hentai match three puzzle games. And that's not to say that, you know, those are without merit for some portion of the populace, but simultaneously, do you really need like eight of them a day? Another common thing I see is like just public domain art made into sliding puzzles. You know, like the, the nine pane sliding puzzles that you just have to slide them around to get them to actually match up. You know what? Let me put this on my other monitor. Well, Steam and uh, new and trending. Lots of good new and trending. What do you got up here? Expansion for American Truck Simulator. Contra Anniversary Collection, Octopath Traveler, you know, stuff that is very noteworthy or well-liked. And even some anime stuff that I otherwise, like, wouldn't know about its existence, like Ideology and Friction. It's apparently a nudity RPG indie game with saxophone content, if you know what I mean. But then you go into full new releases, unfiltered. And I'm going to move this over here. Now, I want to point out, I haven't seen any of these. Some of these might actually be good, okay? Hold on, i got to move this out of the way so I can actually see. But here's some of these names, in case you, you, you want to take issue with what I've been saying. Slime. The three sisters looking for their back home. I swear to you, that's what it says. Aircraft War, that actually looks like the most polished of them so far, and it looks like they're sprites from open game art. Spider Shooting Bee. Gratuitous, gratuitous Animal Massacre, which is just, a, the logo is just complete green, and then two Unity Asset Store shotguns. 30 Days to Survive in Comic Sans. Great Toilet Simulator. You know, okay, you get the idea. So that's, if you ever wonder why I complain about there being too many games on Steam, it's just a discoverability thing, you know? It's, really, it's not the honey pops of the world that leave me uh, sometimes annoyed with Steam's unwalled garden. And I do think, you know, if you're gonna, this is, this is better than Greenlight, in my opinion. Instead of forcing developers to go through, like, a weird pseudo-popularity contest, to just be like, yeah, whatever, you, you give us 50 bucks, your game can be on Steam as long as it's not, like, you know absolutely heinously offensive because um, that's the way it works on you know mobile marketplaces if your game sucks you know that's not really for mr steve jobs to say like hey you can't sell it people want to buy it people want to buy it um instead everything's on there but discoverability becomes a problem that's the stuff that it doesn't bother me but it makes it annoying to sift through because like i would say on every uh, you know, page of 10 games that came out on any given day. Nine of those games are, you know, weird. I don't, people, I think, use asset flip the wrong way. Like, when I make fun of PUBG for using assets from the asset store, it's mostly just because I find it funny that one of the, you know, most profitable devs of whatever year PUBG came out in 2017, I guess, bought their houses on the Unreal Marketplace, I think. But mostly, I think, you know, reusing assets is just as critical as development becomes more and more expensive, you know? 
Nobody really cares if you're like, you know. But you don't have to manually make like every single sprite by hand. Like, if you already made 10 soda cans for your previous game, you know, feel free to use them as ambient art in your next game. You know what I mean? But, uh, I don't, I don't mean asset flips like, you know, they bought some assets on the store and now they've used them in a game they're selling. I mean asset flips is in like, there's two guns that we got on the Unity Asset Store here. And we're releasing our game for a dollar on Steam. We didn't even bother spell checking the title. Not the store page, which is already obviously indefensible. But uh, for if you're trying to actually be like a, a legitimate publisher or developer. But we didn't even spell check the title. That's that's what about 90% of Steam's releases are these days. And the other 10% are like, we legitimately in good faith have tried to make a good game. That's not for me to judge, but at the same time, that's just my opinion right now. And that's not to say Steam sucks. Still my preferred marketplace, but uh, simultaneously. It's, it's harder than ever to find the good stuff. Not because you get tricked into playing the bad stuff. That used to be a problem. Now it's literally just like, do I have the willpower to sort through, you know, 50 kind of clearly garbage. I don't, and I don't even feel bad about calling them clearly garbage, and I normally try to be pretty diplomatic about it. <laughs> but like, if it's, it's like, a, you, you gotta be pretty video game woke. To be like, well, gratuitous animal massacre with the bright green background and the uh, animal, or not animal, uh, the uh, shotgun assets. That's looking, you know, you never know, that could be a masterpiece. Well, you know, there is weird looking stuff that actually ends up being uh, great sometimes. Uh, but it's usually, I, I, it subverts the trope, I guess, like Pony Island, for example. Is like, is made to look kind of bad. I gotta see how this goes. But then, and I'm, I'm careful with the way that I say that, I, I think. But it's made to look kind of bad and then transcends that over the course of the game. To be honest, I kind of think like Undertale's uh, in that camp as well. I'm not saying it looks bad or it was made to look bad. But, you know... For a game of that pedigree to look like that, the fact that it looks like that is is a deliberate design choice, not a restriction of like artist's uh, ability. You know, that's an actual artist intent, if that makes sense. I think I got myself across in the nuanced way that I would that I would like to there. So now the, it's open season. You can take issue with me if you want. Yo, all stats up. No stats up. All stats up? Yeah, okay, more or less. Um, it's it's a strange run right now. I, I'm hopeful. I didn't really look, but I'm hopeful our range has gotten a big bonus. Oh, it has. Okay. Um, I'm also hopeful that we could not have Curse of the Unknown. I'm actually starting to get a little nervous about our Curse of the Unknown. We've had it for like three floors in a row. Now, one floor Curse of the Unknown, I admire it. You know, it, it it's a crucible. It makes things harder. Four floors of Curse of the Unknown consecutively. A little annoying. It's almost like we're doing a cursed run. Um, I just want to know how much HP I have. Not just for a deal with the devil purposes, because I know we have at least one right now. Because the uh, Sister Maggie deal didn't change currencies when we took the first deal. But I, I'd like to use Blood Rites, you know? For a little variety's sake. I mean, I'll still take contract from below. I mean, come on, I am a, I am a red-blooded North American Isaac player. <laughs> I mean, I have needs here. One of those needs is doubled consumables. So I think what might be for the best for us, because, I mean, there's no... It, it's not likely we'll get it on the next floor, but it could happen. Um, we should maybe just... Uh, if, if we're... Save fish on HP, we can get to the shop buy as many spirit hearts as, as you are able to do. Now, why not take quad shot? Because we have Libra. I think we gotta rethink our priorities and quad shot is, is gonna lower all of our stats. 
It will give us four shots, and it might not lower our stats by that much, although I think it will. Um, but I don't think it's worth it right now. I think it's it's way too dicey to be. I don't even think it's close to being worth it. Anyway, that's the only reason I. Uh, I wouldn't even say like I get annoyed with E3 for that, but it's just like legitimate games. You know, that are made in good faith with the intention of being as good as, you know, they're capable of making them. Those are uh, more absent during E3 as, you know, publishers and established developers are away. The stuff that's like, you know, big butt, match three, tycoon. Those still come out in abundance. Thank God I can see my HP here. And if you want to play that stuff, more power to you. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I'm not trying to take your game away from you. I'm just saying, like, you know... Again, like, when there was one game and it was like Goat Simulator, but they still, like, you know, we're kind of trying to make it good on top of the fact that it's also just a joke that it exists. Um, I was like, alright, I understand. I don't I mean, I don't, I don't like Goat Simulator as a game, but I like the company. Um, they also made uh, Satisfactory, which I think is a, a really cool game. But... Now that, you know, there's... And this is not their fault at all. But now that there's, like, you know... My bum simulator! That's where, you know, I'm just like, come on. Just get over it. I mean, I, I also think people are weirdly under the impression that, you know, those games make a lot of money. I'm sure they make, like... I know, I know the trading card, uh, like, scam that people perpetuated for a while. You know, you make, like, one cent off of every trading card sold from your game, but... Um, or something along those lines. Anyway, you you make some money whenever people trade trading cards that were from your game. So there were games that were just like, buy this and get trading cards, you know? Um, either way. Like, apart from that, I'm pretty sure that, like, the average garbage game like that makes, like, under... Maybe even un under 50 bucks, from being honest. I was gonna say under 100. You might be saying, like, you know, NL, don't be ridiculous. There is no way a game that comes out on Steam for a dollar would sell less than 100 copies. And I'm like, dude, I, I definitely think that it could. Because <laughs> nobody but me is dumb enough to ch even check the new releases page. That's the other thing. I'm the only uh, idiot that's going in there to look at it. You gotta wait until the Discovery Engine recommends you buy Pick Your Nose Simulators 1998. Okay, we definitely need this. Our HP is in a, a very dire spot. So dire, I thought about taking Lazarus' rags, but... Everything else about the run is, is absolutely fantastic. Knew it could have happened. I was hoping it wouldn't. Anyway. I sound like I'm in favor of restricting it. I'm not. I'm I'm honestly more of a fan of the of of the Wild West, you know, letting anybody release whatever they want. The thing that I find more annoying is when people act like these developers that are putting garbage out are making like millions of dollars. That's extremely rare. It does happen, but it it's very rarely like, you know. I don't know why I keep coming up with names, you know. Fart your guts out, simulator. It's very rarely like that. It's usually like people who capitalize on other things that maybe consumers can be naive about. Like, hey, I'm making a science-based MMO <laughs> featuring dragons. <laughs> I always go back to that example. Hey, I have no dev experience, but I'm making a science-based MMO featuring dragons. Here's my first piece of concept art. And then, like, it was a different time. It was, like, seven years ago. Um, it's a relatively different time. It got upvoted to, like, the top of r slash gaming or something like that. And people were like, wow, the concept art looks really good. Um, but have you ever considered giving the dragons larger talents? And you're like, man, I, I love your passion. I love your attitude. 
But at the same time, if you ever consider that somebody who has no dev experience, probably, you know, th this thing's never going to see the light of day. I don't mean to be negative, but, you know, no, nobody's making MMOs anymore. And the ones that come out oftentimes kind of stink. You really think that somebody with no experience is just going to... Oh, you fool. Pop off and, and make the next best. It's, I remember in her post, and I, I've since then, you know, like, she's popped up on Reddit now and then as, like, you know, I am the person who made the science based dragon MMO post. I don't mean to, uh, you know, like, pile on. It was a while, like, a long time ago. It's ancient history and internet context, but, like, you know, she was like, yeah, you know, I was younger then, I was naive about dev, you know. But she was talking up a big game. She was like, dragons will meet in the wild. They'll have traits. Uh, if they breed with one another, the traits will pass on, you know, in a realistic fashion from one dragon to the other. And I'm like, lady, you got like a like a 3DS Max boulder with a 3D model of a dragon on top of it. We got a long way to go before we start talking about implementing a system like that. Do I think I could do it? No, absolutely not. Not even, I, are you kidding me? I struggle implementing like a linked list or something like that from time to time. To give me to code a system like that is just, I mean, I would i would never do it. HP is, oh, thank God we're back. I think we have just enough now, thanks to Placenta, honestly. That's why whenever Rob tells me like his, his game ideas and is like, do you want to code it? And I'm like, first off, no, not to be rude, but it's a huge time investment. It's not like you just asked me to help you move. It's like you just asked me to, like, build a house for you. But secondarily, uh, no, like, I don't want to. And also, no, I can't. Because what you're asking is, like, way beyond the expertise of, of, you know, probably any single programmer by themselves, but much less me. Anyway. This is, uh... With bad trip, we should be fine. And these have been very, very quick runs today. But this is, is still is a spotty situation. Ain't no doubt about that. You definitely want to make a run for it back here. Anyway, this episode is making me sound like a real jerk. <laughs> oh, last episode, he, oh, I'm too busy to see my kid nieces. This episode, no, Rob, I don't want to make your dreams come true. Well... You know, if you want to phrase it like that, it does sound bad. That's a little unfair, though. You know, man, you, you could say that about anything. You know? You could have, like, you know, your kid could have an ear infection. Hey, Mom, can we go to the doctor? I got an ear infection. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I can't enjoy Real Housewives of Atlanta. Little Timmy's ears hurt, and that's more important than Mommy's one hour a night of solo time. Uh, you're like, see now you're like, well when you say it like that, Timmy's, he should really suck it up. I mean, can't he just wait an hour to go to the hospital? Well, guess what? Little Timmy's dead. You know why? His mom is Jessica Beale. Okay. That Jessica Beale recently this week, she came out as a, an anti-vaxxer, so I just, uh... Ah! It, honestly, with context, the joke sounds a lot less bad. Unless, accidentally, I've forgotten the fact that she is, you know, lost a child, in which case that's just horrible. And, I mean, I hope it's obvious I didn't mean it that way. But, you know, if that's the case, I apologize. I can be wrong in that situation, and she can still be dumb for not vaccinating her hypothetical children, you know what I mean? We could both be dumb. As is, I mean, it's not we can both be dumb. We both are dumb. The difference is that hopefully with a little bit of, you know, shaming from the public, Jessica Beale will start to act smarter. The jury's out on me. I'm probably just lost forever. That was a good joke. Don't question it. <laughs> There was a joke in there that was good. If you don't have the courage to laugh at it, well, that says more about you than it does about me. If the joke had been made with Jenny McCarthy, everybody would have laughed, okay? You know it's true. There are some uh, Pavlovian punchlines, you know, that people just treat as uh, 
instant laugh buttons. That's what I get for trying to get outside of this, the parameters of the system. This run, I should not feel like overconfident on this run. It's still spotty. I apologize, by the way. It's uh, no matter what, it's going to be three pretty quick runs in a row. And I, you know, I like a quick run. I'm a sick run. I like a quick run. Come on. Speed down. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not... None of them have been rush downs. This one, we just happened to have gotten a three rate of fire on the first floor. And uh, selfishly, I chose not to throw it away by using the D8 over and over again. Some kind of selfish jerk. Like like little Timmy. Didn't you learn anything from the lesson of little Timmy? It's wine o'clock, Timmy. Don't talk to me until I've had my Sauvignon Blanc. I'm going too far. I know, I'm laying it on a little too thick. Ah! For a bit there, I forgot that we were in a tough spot. Now I'm like, okay, I remember now. But... This one, this is kind of like my ideal run, and I say that all the time. But it's it's got a little splash of Zane with Libra and, you know, the D8 and the incredibly high rate of fire but low damage and range for a bit. It's uh, got a lot of power, obviously. And it's also got uh, a little bit of risk still inherent. I like that. Plus, we got a little tactical sort of black rune. Keep in mind... Every uh, black rune suck is an all stats up. So I thought we go for that right off the bat. And it, it's, I don't know, maybe there are some items out of those question marks that were worth more than their proportional stat increases, but on the whole, Preparation H feels good. That's a little Austin Powers for you. I told you, I'm somewhat of a scholar of cinema. I've seen all of uh, Mike Myers' films. Including the Halloweens. Nothing? We have three luck. I mean, I'm, I'm actually... Now that we've gotten such a colossal stat increase, I, I'm much less worried about our HP to begin with, but I suppose... Or much, worried, much less worried about the run to begin with. I suppose... With the uh, Curse of the Blind... It's not inconceivable we could accidentally pick up something that's pretty terrible. Um, now, we could get around that by not picking up anything, but that would make us a coward. And that's like my number one word uh, that I shout when things go wrong in a video game, whether it makes sense or not. So you know that that's not what I want to be in Isaac. It is what I am in real life and also in like a lot of video games. But in Isaac, that's the one game where I can uh, get that melancholy out. And instead, you know, take the bull by the horns. You know, there's a guy who really did that. That's a Ben Stiller. I've seen all the Ben Stiller movies, including Reality Bites. Surprising little crepe fold of a callback there. It was this video, right? I don't know. The videos have been going so fast today. I kind of forgot what we talked about in each one. Help me. Okay. We should be fine. I apologize for repeating the same thing over and over, but normally when you get down to the chest, it's not this much in question. You know, it's usually like lights out is not fair, but I mean, let's be honest. Many times we play Isaac, the run is essentially decided by the time you leave the mom fight. It's just the way of the world. I think that the proper way to go here will actually be down. Mostly because I don't want to do... The, like, the L-shaped rooms, they can be a little... I'd rather do a square-shaped room. At least I don't have to deal with that corner, you know what I mean? It's like driving on the highway versus driving on the back roads. Okay. I've made a slight error in judgment. It's okay. Life will go on here. Honestly, as long as we have one hit to absorb on the boss fight, and we're way ahead of that right now, uh, I think we'll be totally okay. Unless Mysterious Liquid is just good, although it didn't do anything for us there. 
Spelunker's hat has illuminated our secret room. Just trying to, you know, do everything the proper way by the book to make sure we finish off properly. I was wrong about Mysterious Liquid. It does still give us the creep. That's not worth that much, but it's worth more than nothing. I'm just surprised we didn't get a stat bonus out of it. So if there's one, like, you know, if you want to pour one out this weekend, pour one out for, uh, or weekday, I'm not judging you. Maybe you work third shift. Um, maybe you make your own hours. Pour one out for my boy, Blood Rites. Which I really did have the intention to try to make work. But several floors of not knowing where our HP was, combined with uh, then having low HP, kind of left us in the lurch. For now, though, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!